what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the After Effect Podcast. I'm your host, LeBron Stephan. But you can call me LBZ, LB, Big Brian, 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 B Ron, LB, Barani, the Torch Jaws. Welcome to episode 65. We have a very, very, very special guest, San Ignatius assistant boys basketball coach Kyle Hubbard is on the show today. Cleveland native was a was a, was a local star standout and all American in football and basketball at St. Edward High School, graduating in the same year as me in 2007. From there, he went on to go to the University of Pittsburgh on a football scholarship, played there one year as a tight end, then transferred to Cleveland State to play basketball, was there a short stint, then transferred to John Carroll to play basketball, football, starter at John Carroll football, basketball, play on the back, uh, and now is an assistant basketball coach at St. Edwards High School in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, super uber excited to have Kyle on the show. He used to compete, obviously, in high school at different camps. Uh, he, you know, he was a top recruit, top 20 recruit in the state of Ohio, and I was as well. So, yeah, just send him the link. And once he jumps on, we will go. Man. A guy who came from Cleveland. Okay, what? Well, you ain't from Cleveland, no. Cleveland was the best location in the nation. Yeah. You know, we from Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. Glenville community on the east side of Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland was called the best location in the nation. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. You good? I I can hear you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect, yeah, perfect. Hey, 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 I appreciate you joining, bro. I know, I know you're a busy man, man. No problem no, man. Not like you, man. I'm good. <laughs> yes, sir, man. So um, this is called the After Effect uh, podcast or a show. I started it about, uh, about 14 months ago um, because I felt like, you know, there's power, power in our stories. And I feel like we all, as top-tier athletes, we all have an after effect or an aftershock from our athletic journey. You know, we're in a 20 year relationship and when it's all said and done and we have to transition to that next thing, I've always felt like that transition was minimized. So this is kind of like a free and safe space for us to kind of relive our athletic journey, talk about some good times and bad times. But more importantly, talk about that transition out really just as we try to push the culture forward. Right, right. No, for sure, man. I appreciate you for having me, man. I've never been on a podcast. I was like, you know what? Everybody else been on podcasts and look, man, it's my time. I'm on the podcast. It, I, I felt like the time was perfect, man. I was in town. Uh, I, I, obviously, I, I don't get home much, so and we was able to to hoop. And I just remember us competing several times in high school. Uh, you know, in football and basketball. And I know you were like a top twenty recruit in the state, and me as well, man. So I just felt like that. That was kind of like a perfect segue after this weekend. For sure, man. Perfect. But where are you at now? Where are you living? I'm, I live in Atlanta. Oh, you're in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. I'm in Atlanta, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. So um, before we like dive into your childhood and things like that, I just want to get your take on a couple of current events, man. So I know game one. Now I, we can appreciate this. We were both doing sport athletes in high school. Right. Uh, I don't think I was all state in basketball like you, but I was all this. Okay. All right. All right. That's uh, fair. Right? Hey, you was, you was all. That's what it is. No, no, you, you, you know, you, you, you was nice, man. So I know game one of the NBA finals was yesterday. Who do you have winning the NBA championship? Did, did you think it would be the Bucks and the Suns? Uh, and then, if so, who do you have winning the why? I mean, obviously, man, I feel like nobody thought it was going to be the Bucks and the Suns. Exactly. Um, just, just because of uh, the injuries and everything this season, um, with everything that has went on. Um, and uh, but, but I truly feel that uh, uh, I got Suns and six, man. Suns <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I was going to say Suns and four if Giannis yeah. didn't right. come back, you know? Right. I think I I would I going off yesterday, I would say the Suns and Four, but I think Giannis will, will only get better. And I think they'll at least get one or two games in Milwaukee. Uh so yeah, like you said, Suns and Six. I mean, like the rest of the world, I would have loved to see the Lakers and the Nets. 
<laughs> yeah. in the finals. All right. right. I feel like that would be a toss up. I don't, to be honest, I don't know who would win that. To be right. honest, uh, right. but but yeah, man. So what, what's your take? Because I know you're you're assistant uh, high school basketball coach at Saint Ignatius right now. What's your take on some of the players feeling feeling like you know some of the teams that went deep into the playoffs last year during the coronavirus pandemic? Do you think they got enough time off, even though they had those four months off when the when the pandemic was first announced? Like, what's your take on that? Oh, with the you talk, you mean with the NBA guys? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, dude, it's your job, man. It's a business, you know. So <laughs> I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm sure, I'm sure it was gonna be 50-50. And the guys mm-hmm. knew that they really didn't know that, you know, they were gonna have a shortened, you know, uh right. layoff, you know, right. and which, um, you know, when you're playing, you know, those many games, I know these guys are superior athletes because they're the top of their class, but at the end of right. the day, they're human, you know, right. so everybody's gonna need a certain amount of rest. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, but you know, with, with our players, like we're in the group messages all the time. And a lot of the players, we say that, you know, they're talking about how, you know, they should have had an, an extra, you know, like three weeks off added yeah. on to, you know, what they normally come back because of just other coronavirus shortened season and a lot yeah. of you know, uh, unknown, as, right. you know, as everybody say. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. man, yeah, it's your job. <laughs> yeah, I like say, yeah, it's, it's just a billion dollar business. And it was funny. They were talking about it on ESPN yesterday. It was like, Okay, start on Christmas or wait another month and lose. I think it was like close to a billion dollars in revenue just over that four week span. I was like, wow, because because the, the Christmas games are so big and the New Year's games are so big going into a new year. It's just like I, from a fan from a fan perspective, you you don't know that they're losing that much revenue. So that's when the other players was like, obviously, because but begrudgingly they want to they want more of a rest, but they're like, all right, I guess we got to come back. Right, like you say right. it's a business. It's about it's about the money. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that yeah that that makes sense, man. So one more current event. Well, actually, two more. I know it's early training camp for the NFL starts and uh, at the end of July, at the end of July, a couple of weeks. But what's your early prediction on who wins the Super Bowl? I'm. I would presume you're brown. You you're brownies. Browns, man. Sure. You can just stop okay. Browns, baby. <laughs> Okay, Brown, you know, I stay mean, here. I, I mean, I, I like everybody. I feel like the NFL is going to be better this year overall, yeah. just because of the excitement. I feel like the NFL is better when the <laughs> the Browns are good and other teams that have rich tradition, even though the Browns, you know, we have a tradition of losing somewhat or just being a, you know, a, a ticking time bomb. I, I think yeah. that football is better when we're, when we're, uh, when we're better. So I'm going with the Browns all day, man. I'm going to say it's some tough thing, bro. Some yeah. tough teams. I mean, the Chiefs were in the same, you know. I know that the play last year was the, that you know the helmet to helmet call. You, you know, you know that was my next question because I tell guys all the time the Browns should have been in the Super Bowl. When when does it ever happen in a playoff game that Patrick Mahomes goes out injured and can't come back in, and all you have to do is stop a backup quarterback on like third or fourth and fifteen? And you let him break the pocket and scramble and get the first down. Well, I mean, like, when does that happen? I think if they would have stopped the Chiefs that game, they would have beat the but they would have beat the Bills in the AFC Championship. And I like not to say they would have beat TB12 because it's hard to go against TB12, but we should have at least been in the Super Bowl. Exactly, man. Exactly, man. An entire <laughs> city, man, would have would have been in Tampa. Because we right, you know Tampa, and and you know when uh, when the Buccaneers won, um, it, it it was at home too, and it. People were right. crazy, but it was like, come on, man, you guys just won. You you guys just won a Super Bowl, you know? And, and they had a little bit of right. arrogance, which I was like, man, y'all just won a Super Bowl. I know y'all right. I know y'all pumped, but come on, we need more energy. So in my head, I'm like, man, if this would have been the Cleveland Browns, man, uh, oh, you, Cleveland would have been. You know, Cleveland goes crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy. Yeah, definitely, man. La- la- so last current event, bro. Um, how did you feel that you had to grow, obviously, I mean, we're on the latter part of 2021, but 2020 was the weirdest year to date. I believe we're the same age, but we've never had to walk through a coronavirus pandemic. The world has never shut down. We've never had to wear masks. We've had to find our way and pivot in so many different ways. How did you feel yourself having to grow spiritually, emotionally, physically, uh, you know, during the coronavirus pandemic, especially being a leader of men and, and you know, being a coach of men and having to kind of be that example? Well, I would say, you know what, uh, you know, it struck, you know, struck everybody off um, off guard, but I would say the true blessing for me was May May 1st, 2020, when my son was born. So my oh, son wow. was okay. born right, yeah, you know, right in 
you know, the right, right, was right there. Right so in that ship. Yeah. It was it was more so me. It took my focus off because I was on a hustle and bustle, moving, moving, moving. The corona stopped me. You know, this yeah. you know, stopped everyone. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, with me being at home, um, and it, it, it was great, it was great bonding time with me, my son, my girlfriend, and yeah. and and just seeing like like wow, like we really didn't notice about each other, or right. you're breaking down film more because you have more right. time. You got more time. You, you got more downtime. Talking to the coaches more, like, hey, if you know, if if the season happens, you know, hey, this is what we're gonna do, and you know, you're mm-hmm. you don't want to be behind the eight ball and say, well, look, well, this COVID happened, but no, it happened. So it's like, how right. are you gonna adjust? And you know how it is with us being athletes. It's like, boom, right. it's adversity. Boom. How do you find how do you find adversity? And they're saying yeah. stand out. So. Let like let's let's do stuff. We're battle tested. So exactly. um, I would say that that literally that spiritually, you know, just thanking God that you know, like it didn't affect me and my family like it did others. Yeah. Um, just praying for everyone, you know, that we can get yeah. through safe and sound. Um, yeah. was, and, uh, was there was there any fear? Not to cut you off. Was there any fear? Because I remember the announcement being made on like March twelfth or eleventh or tenth, somewhere around there. And I heard you say that your son was born May first, so I know that you know that you knew that your girlfriend was was expecting and it would be soon. So when that was announced, was there any fear? Were you afraid to go to the grocery store to get groceries? Like, what was was it was it any just kind of that those kind of anxieties leading into her, into her having birth? You know what? You know what? To be honest, it was like so there was only could be us two at the hospital because everything was locked down, no family or anything like that. But when we came home. And when they were saying that, you know, you're you're looking at social media and that's bad, you know, in certain in certain instances, you gotta take everything you see with a grain of salt, especially in that time. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff like, all right, go go to the store. If I go to the store, how long am I gonna be in there? Let me write a list. Let me whatever store I go, right. let me see ahead what aisles they're all in. Right, you know, right, right. I'm not right. wasting time and lingering and you know, making right. sure, you know, I'm, I'm doing my due diligence, but I'm getting in and getting out. Um, right. And I would say that was like the only time um, that I was really like worried as far as like going to the store, I would say. Um, okay. But as far as going outside and being away from people, it actually helped me out because I would go to the track every day, Lakewood, like Lakewood track. And I lost like 30 pounds, you know, wow. it motivated me. I was like, hey, I'm waking up. I'm getting this done. Like, you know, everything that I was doing was put on hold. So I'm like, let me just go work out, you right. know, All right. just, and it just sparked something. I just went to the track, you know, and, 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 got, and got in that routine. Got, in that got routine. into a routine because I was always on a go, go, go. It slowed me down. And it was like, bro, like, I think you should do this for your health. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 And, and it helped out a lot. So. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. That's that, that's that's powerful, man. Um, And I, and I appreciate your honest candor on that. Uh, So, yeah, man, let's dive into your childhood. Obviously, uh, we were both born in 89. We were, we were we grew up in the 90s. I always feel old when I say this. but. You know, we didn't grow up like the kids now. We didn't have YouTube, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have video cameras. We literally used to have to be outside all day, actually physically interact, be creative, make up games. It was kind of a different world. Internet did come out to like 97. Uh, PlayStation and Dreamcast came out like 98, 2001. Right. right. But most of the 90s, we really had to interact. It was kind of just like a different world. So paint me a picture on what it was like growing up in Cleveland from your viewpoint in the 90s. Did you have any mentors that you looked at? That you, oh, that you looked up to that kind of kept you on a straight and narrow. Oh man, you know what? Uh growing up in it, I grew up on 115th of Woodland. So okay. my father went to Benedictine for a little bit before he got booted. Uh, funny story you always <laughs> talk about. Um, but I grew up on 115th of Woodland and every everybody in the neighborhood, you know, they had kids. So mm-hmm. um from sun up 7 a.m. summertime from to to the street, we had to come home when the street lights came on. Same here. <laughs> so, 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 so when the sun was coming up, my mom would be like, "Hey, the the, the sun's almost up. Do y'all want to go outside?" So that's why now I'm an early bird. Regardless, mm-hmm. my mom mm-hmm. and dad, people don't understand. They think it's from sports. No, my mom used to wake us up because she'd be like, "Hey, y'all want to go outside and play?" Because you know you got this mm-hmm. 12 hour day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever you got. So, um, just being outside, man. So a lot of how kids these days got trainers and. This and that and stuff like that. You know what? It's so different. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. Like I would just get up. We played 
you know, any bounce. Base, we play any mm-hmm. bounce, baseball, Dino man, man. Hunt, yeah. Dino yeah. man, basketball. Yeah. So we did, we see. did all the sports. <laughs> it was like Sandlot. So we did all the sports, but we broke it down literally in pods before lunch or certain right. things like that. And I mean, that's yep. when I grew. That's when I grew my love for the game because it was like a sports in general. Because it was like we was doing so much, and it just right. felt good. You know, as right. a kid, you're not really getting tired, but when you get tired. You run a straight to the side of somebody's house, get the water hose, boom. Exactly. <laughs> as you replenish and you and you right back out there. Yep. You're right back out there. So I mean, my earliest memories like just being outside, man. I used to walk up to Zama George. Yeah. Um, because we were close to Zama and right when they first built Zama. So we was right there. We were running the first dares. I'm there and I would dribble my basketball up there. And when I first got my basketball, I would dribble the dare and back. Um and that's and at then I was like, man, man, sports might be something, but I really don't know. You know, I was the same okay, time yeah. body, but I just yeah. love to be outside. I love to play right. sports. And right. the first sport I fell in love with, you know, is being out with soccer. Cause okay. Zama had a Zama had an indoor uh indoor soccer league. <clears throat> and shoot, my best friend at the time, Special Jennings, we would yeah. play, me and Special, we was the all-stars, we would play nonstop. It was everything. Mm-hmm. So it was like you know, by, by having somebody who loves sports just as much as me and being mm-hmm. a girl, I didn't care if Special was a girl. I'm like, Special was a baller. Yep, you know what I'm yep. saying? For me and Special was together all the time playing ball. So I was like, wow, if sports make somebody like that passionate, then I know I'm in the right lane. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. just being around those kids at the time and just seeing how much everybody valued being outside. We yeah. played video games, but we was outside, yeah, yeah, I can, I, I can definitely attest to that. My grandfather lived on 128th in Kansas, so okay. I just spent my summers over there, and my father lived on 169th and miles, a little more up the way. But spending those summers at my grandfather's, we would go to Zelma George every day. And it's funny you mentioned special because I've had her on on a podcast. I'm supposed to have her back. She's supposed to be coming here to Atlanta for some AAU coaching as well. So I'm gonna pull up on her, man. But uh, I remember meeting special at at up at Zelma George, and me and my dad playing two on two versus I think her and her uncle. Okay. It was, it was maybe like her uncle or her cousin or something like that. And she was the first girl that I saw. I was probably like eight or nine or 10, but she was the first girl I saw that could really hoop. Like, I, like I'm like, i like, oh, snap. I got to like play her for real. Like, like she yeah. had game. Game, game. <laughs> yeah, but it's, man, it's funny. Like that those Emma George days, man. Like I remember me and my twin, we would walk up Imperial from 128th up Imperial. Straight across that, you know, the long, the long grass. Yeah. We would go swimming all day to the pool clothes. Pool yep. clothes are like three or four. Then you go to the courts and hoop to, to, to the street. Like, come on, Dan. You know what I'm saying? Go uh, go home, man. So, right. like like you said, we was just always outside, man. I feel like it's so so much different now because, not to say te- that technology is a bad thing because it's a great thing for this generation, but right. they have so many things that could distract them from being outside now. Yep. Right? Whereas we didn't really have that. We didn't have that at all. It was like, yo, what we gonna we not about to sit out and talk to our parents. Exactly. We're gonna yeah, be outside yeah. and figure something yeah, out. Yeah, we much rather just go and do something and wander. But those are the times where, you know, what they say, I saw a meme where it was like how you knew the whole squad was together when you saw the bikes out in front right. of each other's house. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like just laid out on the front lawn, just oh, you knew the squad was over there, and that's how it was. Right. You yeah, know, no, you, no. Just, you would just be on the move. So, I mean, man, yeah, I mean man, it's definitely, true, definitely man. different these days. Definitely different. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. So, uh, when would you say, I think for any top tier athlete, we all have, we all know, we have, we all have like a time where we kind of come into our own. For me, I think it was probably like 10th grade. I mean, I started varsity football and basketball. I started getting letters. I started making a lot of plays. I had a growth spurt. Muscles got a little bigger, started getting the offers. So when did you, for me, it was about 10th grade. I was about 14, 15. When would you say for you during your journey that you started to come into your own, that things started to make sense, that you started to get those, that, those letters, you started to hear from coaches, and that dream that you probably always had to play college sports or go to school for free kind of started to become that reality, like, oh, man, I could probably really do this. Well, you know what? It is, it's funny because I would say when I was – when I was 14, I was playing down in a Barberton tournament with a with a four, four seal Tigers, and um and um Mr. Swoop, rest in peace, Mr. Swoop, um Karan Swoop, his sons, one of my good friends to this day. And yeah, Swoop, that's my I, dog. I was, I, was, I was I was on their team, so he made the team for Swoop, and I came on the squad, 
And, um, you know, I, I guess I was, I was one of the top players in the city or whatever in the state, you know, in the yeah. eighth grader, and we're playing down at Barberton, this Barberton tournament, and I'm killing. I'm killing him for I'm killing. I mean, I'm six one and a half, six two at the time, but I'm killing, mm-hmm. you know. And um, and I guess Coach Drew Joyce, um, he uh he pulled my dad aside or something like that. It was like, yo, I want him to, I want him to play with us, you know. King Jack, the, it was Indio shooting star. This was right before Brian um right. that went to the league, right before Brian went to right. the league. And um, and that's when when I joined Indio Shooting Stars, I left Forest Hills and play with the NEO shooting stars and they came to King James shooting stars. And now I went from going to, you know, to Akron, to Barberton tournaments, to Cleveland Heights tournaments, to Nashville, I mean, to Tennessee and yeah, national. tournaments. And I'm seeing yeah. the real wreck. Like I'm seeing like the OJ yeah. Mayo's at the time, the D Roses and right. stuff like that. So you're seeing like these guys and you're like, wow, this is real. But the thing is though, like playing against these guys, but holding my own. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not balling. just holding my own, but really, but really doing, but really balling though. Like, wow, yeah. like I'm pretty good at this, you know? And yeah. um, and when I got to St. Ed's, so I was gonna go to St. V, didn't work out, end up going to St. Ed's. And the crazy thing about it is though, I lived four blocks over from Cleveland Heights. And <laughs> and I crazy thing, funny story. So eighth grade, I used to go from Roxborough practice. To Cleveland Heights practices. Mm. Eighth grade, Capaletti would have me go from practice to their practice, and I would practice with him. Wow. It was crazy. I was in the eighth grade. Just, yeah, learning the offense, kind of getting used to how high school practices was ran. Just go ball, but I was hooping though. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I was, okay. you know, and the funny thing is, my brother was on freshman, right? He was on freshman at the time. And I would yeah. go in, I would go in with the freshman team and I would bust their ass. <laughs> and it was funny i'm like bro what's up you'd be like man don't man stop coming to our practices man stop practices. but I, w- yeah. I would say i would say when i was 14 and i got to st ed's and uh and after one and after one freshman game because i didn't play football my freshman year um okay, okay. after uh one freshman game uh Coach Flan was like, "You're not playing JV anymore. You're playing varsity." And that's the right there. I was like, "All right, I'm. I might be. I might be pretty good because not too many people get to play, you know, at the yeah, time yeah. varsity at the time." Yeah, definitely not, especially at uh, St. Edward. Right, right. And <laughs> I, I remember still, like uh, six games, six seven games too that year. Wow, wow. Because I remember I I interviewed uh, Jawad, you know, Jawad Williams, and. Uh, I think he said like he didn't even start like every game as a freshman that saying that yeah, but his like, team, they, though, like they his, was out they was loaded. Yeah, they was that loaded. 98 team was loaded. <laughs> Joao yeah, was good, but that 98 team was loaded. Yeah, yeah. He, was you know, so about that. Then he became the man. Joao became the man. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did, man. So um that's a dope story. So man, talk about like what went into your decision during recruiting. Cause I, I know that I know you were getting recruited from a lot of universities for football and a lot of universities for basketball. It's kind of seemed like basketball was your first love, but you knew you were athletic and good enough to go to college for football. So I know you chose to go to University of Pittsburgh to play tight end, but I know you you probably had a lot of basketball offers too. So just talk about the recruiting process and what was, went into your decision. Okay. You know what? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this story that not too many people know. I'm going to tell you the story of uh, of everything. <laughs> All right, so, so, you know, uh, shoot. So my senior year, I was getting recruited for basketball and football. Um, but but after my junior year, I'll go back. So my sophomore year, I played JV. Um, played with Tay, Nate, you know, well, Nate was on varsity, played with Tay and those guys. We was really good. And um, and all I just remember my JV year, Brian, all I did was a was a fade or a or a go route, right? And I scored <laughs> every time, right? Every time. And and, and after and after uh um the season was over. One of one of my uh, like our mentors, he was like, "Yo, the University of Hawaii will offer you." I said, "I wow. said that, like to JV, I'm like University of Hawaii, like all right, cool. Like I'm not thinking, you know, what I'm saying I'm like right. I'm a hooper, you know, I'm a hooper. Like I just play to be around right. my homies, you know, what I'm saying like right. football is a, is a legit brotherhood, you know. Oh, and, um, so play basketball, do well, all district or whatever. Sophomore year had a really great sophomore year, and then my junior year, um. You know, we had a really good team our junior year. And matter of yeah. fact, we beat Glenville 
by Junior. Yeah. 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 <laughs> y'all were that loaded. But anyway. I remember. I, I, I was loaded. Y'all had Devin Von Rowe. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah, were loaded. But I'm talking about football. I'm talking about my oh, junior. Oh, about football. Okay. I'm talking about my junior. Okay, okay. I'm talking about my junior. But football, y'all was oh, yeah. team yeah. one. Yeah. Team one. Team yeah. one. But no. Yeah, um, I was sick. But no. So after that, um, we played Maslin. T- tough loss to Maslin. But. That was after- state semis, right? They said finals, man, third and 30. Yeah. Could never yeah. forget. Third and 30, Brian <laughs> Gamble, man. Brian Gamble. But no, uh, but no, yeah. So, but after that game, um, a news writer for like uh Buck Nuts or something like that, like Ohio, whatever the writer was at the time, yeah, he was like, Yo, you're the you're the number one receiver in Ohio. Like you're like you're you're the guy, like you're him. Like you got five, <laughs> you're on the routes, you ain't drop a damn pass, like you're you're him. <clears throat> I was like, all right, bet. But me really not thinking, I'm like, all right, bet. Because I just got basketball in my head. Right, right. So each time I'm like, boom, basketball season goes well, whatever. So my senior year, so for my junior, my senior year, this is where I'm starting to get recruited by everybody. A lot of schools, but not really thinking, you know what I'm saying? Pitt was on me the hardest. Um, that day, Wanstat was on me hard. Um <laughs> Uh, but then, I don't know. I, I don't know why. I thought you were. I thought you would play both at Pitt. So, because so Pitt had a pretty good basketball team. Had too. a really good basketball team. So I'm gonna get to that. Yeah. So then, so then Bush Davis came into the picture, and that's when they was at St. Ed's every day for me, Tay, Nate. You know, they was like, "Yo, like y'all are the guys. We need you at North Carolina." But really not thinking yeah. anything like that. But I was bringing in football football scholarships. Like I was getting football scholarships, football scholarships. But in like the side of my head, I'm like, man, you really want to hoop? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like hoops, you know what I'm saying? But so my senior after football season, um, we we you know the basketball season is great. I give me a great shape, and we're playing out in South Carolina. A lot of people don't notice. So we were playing um in uh, slam dunk, slam dunk to the beach down in uh no beach my bad beach ball classic, beach ball classic mm-hmm. down in South Carolina, and we just mm-hmm. play, we played against um a teammate Pins Pinsbury. I believe, and they had a really good player. But after the game, like I was playing defense, I was scoring, I was, you know, I was being a leader and everything. The guy pulls me aside and was like, "Yo, I'll call, I'll call Steve Spurrier. It was a like a dude from South Carolina. I'll call Coach Spurrier or whatever. Yeah. Get you a full ride, but also I can see you hoop. We'll have you hoop too there. We can get you get you a scholarship there. I don't know how legal this was or something <laughs> like that. Somebody he said he was like, "Yeah, bro, you can play at, you can be a game cock. You can hoop." I'm like. Word, you know, so right. I am like still in my head, still in my head. So right. comes down end of the season's year, we we lose in the state semifinals uh, um, to Cincinnati Moeller. We we was twenty four and one. Um, so I finished my senior season twenty four and one, lost in the state semifinals. But Coach Flannery, he kept telling me he's like Cleveland State wants you. Cleveland State said you got a full ride. But a few other schools in AAU in the summer you know, they offered me a preferred walk on because they was like, we don't know if you're going to play football. So like Clemson, right, right. Clemson and a few other schools was like, we, you know, we was like, ah, we don't, we, you can hoop here, but yeah. we can let the football thing go. So we could use the scholarship so, for somebody else type thing. So back then in 2007, around our era, they weren't really big on guys playing both. They wasn't. Because, because when I think about it during that era from like 2011, 2011, I mean, 2007, 2011, or even like 2003 to 2010, there wasn't really anybody playing both, but that was a little more popular in the 90s. You had yeah. Julius Peppers, you, you know, you had Ron Curry, you had a couple Donovan guys. Donovan McNabb, yeah, those guys. Yeah, you had a couple guys that played both, but it seemed like in our era, they kind of strayed away from that. They didn't really let guys do both. Right, right. So, okay. so when I, so I, I, I cut my, cut my list down short. I really wasn't the type of guy that was like, all oh, right, I got to take all these visits. You know right, what I'm right. to do that. And I wish I did, though. <laughs> I wish I did, though, looking at that. Right. Me now, too. Bro. I only took two. I said it took all five. <laughs> bro, I took, I took an unofficial, which we was going down there anyway for basketball, North Carolina. And then mm-hmm. I took an official to Pitt. Okay. So I took my official visit to Pitt. But, you know, it came down, I was like, bet, I take my only official to this school. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to commit to Pitt. Yeah. You know, I'm going to commit to Pitt. Um, so that happened. So now I'm in full football mode. You know, coach is telling you this, coach is telling you that, you're this, you're that. Yep. Um, yep. So I get to so I get to Pittsburgh. But I was still, about to say that 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 was my next uh question. Talk about that transition going there because I saw that you you only did a year 
and then you not even turn this up more so into basketball at Cleveland State. So yeah, what what was not that transition even. like? Like, so like me, so, what was that right. like? So I was I'll be I was at a I was in a wild place mentally. You know what I'm saying? It was a, it was a lot of stuff that was just that was just bothering me mentally. That was at home. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember um, Nate I, Nate was going through the same stuff around that time too. But but all but but all but also just like not really not really being sure. You know, mm-hmm. I was real cloudy. You know, because you're at a time everybody telling you how good you are. You're this. You're that. You're this. You're that. But I still had right. people you know who kept me grounded and stuff. But it was just like, what do I really want to do? Mm-hmm. You know, it was never like, what do you, it's like, man, I got to, you doing this for that, doing this for that. But if, if I really had to take the time to just sit down, maybe with my buddies, like Nate, Deontay and those guys and sit yeah. down, and really, us really talked about the recruiting part and, right. and those things. I think we talk about it to this day. Maybe it would have been different. Maybe we all would have went to North Carolina because we right. all, you know, been together and knew the ends and outs. Right. But uh, right. yeah, man, because when I got to Pitt, um, I get there in summer. Um, I met uh, LaShawn McCoy was in one of my classes. Like, so Shady, the boss <laughs> Shady. Shady, who I still talk to today. Um, yeah. And a few other guys. Brad Wanamaker was in one of my classes. Um, yeah, they had a squad back then. Yeah, that, yeah, that bro, they, yeah. Football squad. That was, we was like one of the, we was like one of the top recruit. We had one of the top recruiting class. Pat Bostic, he was the quarterback yeah. out of PA. Um, but it was a lot yeah. of people that was coming in as starters. And I was coming in, you know, who was this kid? It was already two starters um, ahead of me. It was a, the dude who was on All American a year before out of high mm-hmm. school. But man, they plugged me in summer, um, just doing some workouts and stuff like that. I'm picking it up. Mm-hmm. I'm balling. Um, uh, but I wasn't there that long okay. because it was here. Here was the changing point. So after a workout, I remember like it was yesterday. It was me. Um, Brandon Lindsay, uh, Maurice Williams, uh, LaShawn McCoy, and I forget who else. We went up to the to the open to the wreck, right? And we're yeah. playing ball. Some of the pit guys are in there, and other hoopers in there. So we get in there. I'm playing against. We ball balling. Yeah, I'm balling. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna <laughs> play against guys who bought that year won the big. I think they won the Big East and all this other stuff. So like, you know what I'm saying? But it was just guys in the gym who was hooping. I'm like, man, mm-hmm. I want to hoop. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I love like this football stuff is cool, but I'm like, I get joy. I get so yeah, much joy. It. I get so much joy out of this. But you know, not really looking at it. You know, I, I went into you know Wanda's office. I told him I'm leaving. He was like, come on, hub, like you should stay and this, this, and that. Um, and I was like, man, my heart's really in basketball. Like yeah. I really want to hoop. But you know, looking back at it at the time, it's like, look, but you can you can hoop on the side, but what's what you can make, you know, a super easy living at. Because right. football came so natural to me just from being a right. basketball player. Exactly, exactly. You, you know, you, you were the perfect tight end prospect. Man, dude, I just yeah. dude, it was it was great. And I could run fast, right. I could run, I can catch, I could jump. And it was cool right. though. But yeah, I got out of there and I transferred to Cleveland State. But at that point, I was getting so much negativity from sides. So me being an 18-year-old uh young man is like, dang, I thought y'all was supposed to be my friends. And his yeah. people left my corner who I thought was cool with me. I ain't talked to my dad. I ain't talked to my father for like a month and a half. Wow. You know, they thought I wasn't going to be nothing, you know? So they were, so I got people who was in my corner patting my back once I Yeah, a, a lot of like, people switch sides, switch sides. was like, oh, you ain't going to be shit. Yeah. You yeah. ain't doing nothing with your life now. You ain't going to be nothing. No, nah, you know that's real. So yeah. get to Cleveland State, on the hooping squad, practicing, doing everything. And that was another good team. That was the team that went to the – Sweet 16. Yeah, Norris I Cole, that. DeAndre Brown, who I still talk to today, good friend of mine. Cedric Jackson, yeah. all those guys on that team. But but at that point, I was battling so many demons from leaving because mm-hmm. I was focused on everybody else's thoughts and emotions that I wasn't mm-hmm. focused on me. So okay. I get into it with the coach, Gary Waters. Um, great guy, great individual. I get into it. I was like, well, man, I'm leaving. So now I'm in a, I'm in a whirlwind. So yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm about to go play football. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, I'm about to, so I like, I'm yeah, not yeah. It, but Mark Harris was always in my corner though. Mark, yeah, Mark. shout out to Mark. Mark was Mark, always in yeah. my corner, bro. Because Mark, Mark he was like one of the first groups to work out with Mark. Yeah. yeah when that raw right. talent started, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And yeah. Beyonce, was, the one that told me about him and got me on. Yeah. So I was going with Tay. Like we was the first yeah. ones to go. And he was like, yo, I got, 
I got so and so, maybe University of Florida or something, or maybe this, they'd be they'd be interested, hub. Huh? Like they heard you and they just want to know what's up with you, blah, blah, blah. So it was crazy. So I'm training with Mark, legit. And I'm at a Cleveland State basketball game, just watching the game, and I see Coach Mike Moran from John Carroll. And I know Mark Moran since I was seven, seventh grade, you know what I'm saying? Six, seventh grade. And he was like, yeah. yo, you want to come to John Carroll and play? So me not knowing John Carroll, you had to, you know, at the end, you're going to be taxed, you know, <laughs> you know, they, you know, yeah. stuff like that. But my mom was at the end of the day, she Education. was like, my mom was like, you're not transferring anywhere else. I don't give a damn. If you don't play <laughs> another sport, you're going to get some, your education. Right. I don't care. And, and to get an education from John Carroll, that's top of the line. So man, John, John Carroll's like Ivy League school. So exactly. I, get, exactly. I get into John Carroll, bro. I'm literally giving you the breakdown of everything what happened to me. So now yeah, no, this, so, this is what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, right. So I get into so I get into John Carroll. You do not make this up. Getting to John Carroll, I'm on a squad, balling. I transfer in. Summer goes in, so I go from D1 study tables, try tutors. You go yeah, straight yeah. to D3 Ivy League caliber. No tutors, no nothing. Your right. own responsibility. You got to grow up. Right, right. I did it. So I had gotten eligible. So, mm -hmm. right, so now I was at Pitt, I was at Cleveland State, and now I'm at John Carroll, mm -hmm. Sylvester. He kicks me off the team. Mm -hmm. LeBron, now I'm not on no team. He, he kicked you off the basketball team? He kicked me off the basketball team, Brian. So now I'm not, I'm not on no team, right? So, look, I know you're making the face. Look, now I'm not yeah. on the basketball team. So, all right, following semester, boom, I get on the football team at John Carroll. I saw that picture. Yeah. I get on I get on the football team at John Carroll. I was like, I just I gotta stay active here. Like my girl got my grades up, gotta stay yeah. active, right? So I get right. on the football team, meet a meet a meet a meet, meet a great, meet a great group of guys, great group of guys on the football team. Well, I still call Sorry, friends to this day. Oh, you're, good. you're good, you're good. Um, and the the spring semester, they overcharged me for student aid. I was like, Come to find out money that I was paying, I was supposed to be getting back. I was supposed to be getting grant. But my mom didn't know that. We didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now I'm not only I get I get kicked off the basketball team. I do a year of foot, I do a semester of football. Now I'm out of school, Brian. Five, now oh, man. semester, okay. I'm out of school. Now I gotta work. Boom, work whole semester. Money, whole semester, miss a whole semester, boom, come back next semester, play football, right? Wow, Come yeah. back to follow us in the next semester, spring semester again. <clears throat> I'm out of school again because they messed up my eight. You out of school spring and then fall too. No, I was out spring, oh, just came spring. back fall, spring. So oh, I'm two springs spring in a row. Semester. Two springs in a row. Two springs in a row, Brian. So I'm oh, like, man. I'm like, come on, never question why, never ask God why. Never did. I was just like, I'm like, I was just like, wow, like why, why? They told me I was supposed to be getting, and then at this time, Moran was not in contact with me. Yeah. So not trying to make him sound like a villain or anything like that, but this he had no contact with me at all, and I came into your school. And everybody, a player will get ineligible every now and then on your, you know what I'm saying, on your team. You just don't throw them yeah. to the pools. And definitely not. Three. How did you – let me ask you this, bro. Like, how did you keep your head in the game, bro? Like, Bro. You experienced oh, oh, so, so much turbulence from 18 to, you know, I guess like 2021 or maybe, maybe 18 to yeah, 20. Yeah, and, yeah, then you caught, that, yeah. and then you caught your stride after that. But like, how did you keep your hand in the game? Did you pull from anything? Because what I'm hearing from you is like all these different people who you were counting on, who you thought you had in your circle, weren't talking to you. You weren't hearing from your dad. You weren't hearing from, from, from the coach who told you to come there. Like so many different people were switching sides and you only had a certain, certain amount of people that that like you know like mark harris that stayed as as resourceful and made sure that you were good like how did you just 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 keep your head in the game and just not quit and say F it? like we see so many guys from cleveland do say F it and go a different route or go a different phase like what did you pull from you know you know i mean outside of my immediate friends like tay and nate mm -hmm. and dre mm -hmm. drains like keeping it real with me um i was yeah. saying mentors man tim highland man he's a godsend he is truly a godsend because he always said i don't care how good you are in the sport that ball's gonna stop bouncing 
no matter oh, how good you are, it's going to stop. So you need to find another oh, way. Oh, and oh, always find a way, you know, to make things work. So if you're going to fall, as they say, fall forward. You're going to fail, fail forward. Learn mm-hmm. from it. And, mm-hmm. but I was just, you, like you say, it was so much turbulence, you know, and yeah, nobody yeah. knew what was going on. And, and, but at that time that everything that happened, God made it clear who was really my friends. Right. So like everybody who I talk to today, I consider them, people say, oh, these are close friends or this, this and that. No, these are like my, these are my best friends. Right. And like right. The people who was with me through my entire struggle, those are my best friends. But they didn't even know I was really struggling because I always had a smile on my face. Of course, of course. You know what I'm saying? So, right. and, and that, and that's, and that's the. So I just pulled from the energy from my mom. You know how mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, black mothers, like, bro, she never. You know complained it. Or if she did, it wasn't in front of us. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was, it was truly something that I just always knew that I was. That I'm, you know, I'm great. I'm good. You know, I'm like, I'm going to be great. I'm going to be good. I can't let the devil win, right. you know, ordeal because I love um, that, you know, because because uh, when I got back to John Carroll, like, so I missed that spring semester. I finished that when I finished that spring semester. I get back. Boom. I meet with my mentor, Tim Hyland, meet with his brother. They, they help me out. They take care of stuff. So, no, I'm good. But, uh, yeah. foot, I didn't play foot. I didn't play football. Um, but crazy story. So now this is two years, right? I'm removed mm-hmm. from the basketball team. I am in the rec gym playing ball. Like I was an intramural league champion. You feel me? Like I'm in there, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I'm in D3 rec ball, you know, like what the hell. And um, <laughs> and my god brother, um, Nick Murata comes in and he I, and I see him out the corner of my eye. He was the GA at the time. I was like, man, get out of my face, bro. Let's go on, get out. He was at What's up? Let me talk to you. I'm like, no, bro, get out of my face. He was like, all right, I'm going to just leave you with this. You want to be an intramural league champion or do you want to be an OAC champion? Which one you want to be? I was, right. like, I was like, damn, that's tough. I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a realist. Call a spade a spade. No gray area. I was right. like, that's tough, man. I was like, that's real. Went on to talk to Moran. We had a little thing. We talked because he knows a lot of my mentors and knows a lot of people, you know, who am I, you know, you know, in my circle and stuff. And, right. and he was like, look, man, I don't want you to this. I said, look, man, I'm just here to, I'm just here to play ball. Like, you know, I got some, you know, towards you and stuff. Like, I don't want to be, you know, re- you know, be envious towards you or nothing like that. Right. or just be mad at you. So um, right. I want to, I want to, at the end of the day, I love basketball. So it's bigger right. than you pretty much. So mm-hmm. whatever I got to do to play. So crazy thing. So here's another adversity. Oh, back, <laughs> back on the team. I'm playing second unit, right? I'm playing like nine minutes a game, maybe 10 minutes a game. I looked at the sheet, maybe like 10 minutes a game. I'm averaging 18 points, right? Second mm-hmm. wave, like 10 minutes. We're playing against Mount Union. I cut back door, go get a pass, go up, tear my ACL. Mm, injury. Tear my right ACL. So I went everything that I've been through. Now I'm that was back. A, that was a junior year. Yeah. I don't even know because I was there so long. Because so, I'm gonna say a year I was in college. Let's say that. Okay. All right. I go up back door, grab the ball, boom, never forget, boom, right ACL, tore my ACL. Mm. So now, after all that had happened, I'm like, man, I'm back on the team. I'm killing. Yada yada yeah. yada. Tear my ACL. Yeah. More friends get leave. Man, so you much adversity. With me, <laughs> bro. And after my surgery, I was down on the couch. I mean. I don't know. I can even count. I can count on my hand how many people visited me. Yeah. Me being down and out on the couch. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's the time you like people out of my life and everything that was going on. I didn't get addicted to 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 luckily I didn't get addicted to any of the drugs. Right. Because I was right. down right. in a super dark place. Super oh, yeah. dark place. And I'm like, yeah. man, why me? Why me? This one, I'm like, why me? Those I, injuries, though, those questions I, always come when you had those big injuries, man. Yep. Bro. I was the same way. Bro. So I'm like, man, why this, man? I'm back. Like, why? Like, why, Lord? Like, come on, man. Like, you yeah. know, uh, but, you know, fight through, fight through, fight through. You already know. Keep fighting. You know, came back next year, shouldn't have played, rushed back, had a shitty year, um, <clears throat> which was which was okay. You know, it was something that I needed. And then the following year, I was an honorable mention All-American, first team, co-player of the year. I saw that. 
I saw oh, that compared to the year. But I was just 16 and 7. So, man, your senior year, like you said, co-player of the year, uh, honorable mention all American. Uh, you had so much success, and you ended your football career with uh, 328 um, um, yards, you know, from from receiving. So, like, what was that feeling like when you got to the to the to the end of that, and you saw you had you had a great senior year, but you went like you said, you went through all that adversity, you went through all that turbulence, so many things changed, all these mixed emotions for for from 2007 to 2013, like. Was that like a liberating feeling at the end to say, man, I, I still accomplished this. I didn't quit. Like, you know, you know, I, you know, I fell down seven times, but I got up eight. You know what? It, it was. But you know what, man? What I love and I hold myself to it, man, is at that time, man, certain friendships truly believe, I truly believe got me through a lot of stuff because mm -hmm. I was at the lowest of the low, you know, and nobody, like I say again, like nobody knew it. Um, but I just knew. I just knew I was always better. I was, I was better than where I was and I had to push myself to get there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, dude, come on, bro. Like, come on. Like you're better than this. Like don't right. let anybody steal your joy, especially right. something that you loved when you was that little boy and you first got your basketball. So can't, nobody, can't nobody steal that joy from you. And, mm -hmm. and even with football, you know, it was, you know, there was instances with John Carroll football where, you know, I just showed up just to work out. And the coaches knew that. I just, sometimes I was just there just to work out. I really didn't study the plays. The coaches yeah. see this and they know it. Yeah. And I know it was hurting them, but it was like, you know, just like, dang, like looking back at it, it was like, dang, if I would have studied those plays, if I really mm -hmm. studied those plays and did extra, like I, I could be playing on Sundays from John Carroll. And everybody, mm -hmm. everybody knew it. But I knew right. it. I put that in, you know, like I should have. Mm -hmm. and, and those are the things where I'm looking, I'm looking back at things just like, you know what? It's it's you're you're I'm not I'm not regret I'm not regretting it, but it's definitely a learning lesson. You of know, course, of course, of course. My son now that I gotta look and help him out, be like, hey, like these are give him the choices and and right. hey, these are the consequences of your choices, you know, and a lot of stuff okay. with us, with us being as good as we were, it was like, all right, you can find it out on your own. Right. <laughs> I was like, oh no, right. you're good. Oh no, you're going. Oh, you're good. You know what to do. I yeah. Or you, yeah, right. Or you, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. I don't. I'm a kid at the, you know at the time, like earlier on, like I'm a kid. Like I don't. I don't know. Right. I mean, you're still trying to find yourself. You're still trying to find find out how to navigate through life. Essentially, bro. Still yeah. trying to find myself. So I would say, literally through that, my out of high school to that John Carroll, I was in a whirlwind. But at the the light when all that happened, yeah. then the people who I met and mm -hmm. the relationship that I built at John Carroll, man, it was, I mean, it was awesome. I mean, it was, it was awesome. Definitely. Definitely, bro, man. So two more questions, because one thing that I've always felt like gets lost in translation is that transition out of sports. Like I, like I preluded earlier uh, to, you know, we were in a 20 plus year relationship with football, basketball, but when it's all said and done, that transition isn't always easy. Now, for you, it seemed kind of seamless because it, it, it seemed like you walked into coaching rather easy. So after you were done at John Carroll, did you already know you wanted to coach? Did you already kind of uh, have some have some spots where you may like volunteer at or things of that nature? Or did you want to work in corporate or the, like did you already know? Was it an easy transition for you? Because for me, it was very hard. I, didn't really, I really didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I still wanted to play ball. So I like had to find a job, but I had to still work out six times a week to stay in shape because I was still getting like NFL tryouts here and there. So what was that transition like for you? Because it seems like it was kind of seen as like you kind of just moved into coaching. You know what? You know what? It, it's crazy as it sounds, man. With Mike Moran letting me back on the team and me being around the guys more, he may save my life for real with that letting me yeah. back on the team and, you know, mentally and stuff. And, um, and then I just, I was like, you know what? Me being around basketball, I want to be around basketball when I'm done. So I had an extra year left. And then when I got done, it was a, it was crazy how it works, man. The Lord works in mysterious ways. So the women basketball coach at John Carroll was leaving. They had a new hire. They were bringing in Kelly Marone, who's a beast. Kelly, who's a monster. And she was coming from Division One, And she came into John Carroll. But we had, we, we, had some, we had some really good players on our, on our women's basketball team. And the girls who were there, they were my homies since they got in. I was there so long. I met everybody and got cool with everybody. And I walked yeah. in the 
office and was like, hey, you're going to have some trouble with these girls. <laughs> I know you are. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to have some trouble with these girls. Do you mind if I help? You know, right. so I always see, I want to always see a uh, championship as a, as a player, you know, at John Carroll in the basketball. So mm-hmm. I'm like, maybe see, let me see if I can help her and try and get one as a coach and help her, you know, get her goal as a coach, always see her first year. So she mm-hmm. was like, you know, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to take, I'm going to think about it. Came back. She was like, I'm going to take you up on that offer. So my last, so my last year I was, I was volunteering mm-hmm. with her. And we had one of the best, um, the, the best records in John Carroll history. Um, uh, uh, I worked with the Post and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I was working with the Post. And our coaching staff was amazing. Alicia Manning. She was from mm-hmm. Tennessee. Janelle Murchison, William & Mary, a boss. They both bosses. Um, and we won the OAC, OAC championship. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, OAC outright. So I'm like, I want to always see as a player, and now I just remember that as a coach. As a coach, when women's basketball, yeah. I'm like, can't beat that, bro. I'm like, that's next level. Like that's some stuff. <laughs> we'll be in a Hall of Fame, baby. No, I'm just talking. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's like wow. Like yeah. I made an impact on the like on the court, and I'm making an impact on, off off the court. And, yeah, I'm saying, the, and the and the girls they really listened to me. Yeah, you know, they just didn't uh, blow me off. They was like, man, he really knows his stuff. And it was cool. And I was like, wow, I can do this coaching thing. Because yeah, so, I'll be honest, everybody can't coach. <laughs> you said everybody can't coach. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I know. I already know. Uh, <laughs> like, I've, I've, I've coached a few times, um, you know, just at different football camps for different college friends, things of that nature. It seems like it seems like fun. But like you said, when you talking about coaching on an everyday basis, on a consistent level, it's, every day is not going to be like, like super shiny or super smooth. But yeah, man, like I know you coached girls b-ball at Beachwood Middle School for a bit. Then you were assistant for the J, uh, John Carroll's women's team. Uh, and you you were also the lead coach for the Cavs Academy. I think you still do that. Um, and now you're the assistant, uh, you know, for boys basketball at Saint Ignatius. What's been the most liberating feeling? Has it was it that OAC championship for John Carroll, or what's been the liberating? What's been the most liberating feeling thus far during your coaching career? I mean, don't get me wrong. That's that's awesome. I mean, but I was I would say the most liberating for me. I mean, even though even though this is a quick side note, like this year was amazing because it was our second year, COVID year, and we made it to the state semifinals. Mm-hmm. You know, so as a, at a Saint Ignatius, and I'm an Eds guy. So yeah, yeah. Our second year, boom. Cameron Joyce does a phenomenal job. We do a great job as his assistants. You know, we're here to serve, yeah. him, and he puts us in the right position to. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it was like literally it was it was phenomenal but i would say my biggest liberating feeling that what i get is doing youth basketball with the Cavs. Mm-hmm. um yeah youth basketball in general because you don't know what a kid is going through at home and right. or or um or if they're not going in through anything at home it's just when they come to the camp and they see us and how it lights up their day and when, when you're when you start on Monday, you end on Friday, and a kid could barely do a certain move, and on Friday they're doing a move and they're going up to you and hugging you and saying, "Coach, you you, you helped me so much." That's right, right. I've cried one time at a camp. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the best feeling. You that little day, hey, coach, yeah, thank you. You know. It's, it's <laughs> oh the, yeah, I, I I can only imagine. It's funny you mentioned that, man, because I asked Tay when I was just home last weekend. Like, I was asking, like, are there any Catholic school? politics like like can you go can you be a graduate from St. Ed but go coach at St. Ignatius or can you be can you graduate from St. V but then coach at Benedict like it's just I, like I was trying to figure out the, the politics can, of that because I thought if you were Ed's guy you go coach at Ed. No you no you can I mean it's all I mean it, it, it's all how, how some of the I would say the weirdos look at it that's, <laughs> what, that's what I call a man uh, St. Ed's yeah. was the best four years of my life I will always be an eagle Bleed green right. to go. I love them over there. Um, right. But the reason I'm at Ignatius is because of Cameron Joyce, man. And, you know, yeah. and he's the first black non alum to be at Ignatius. I mean, in, uh, Ignatius is, is like the Duke of high school bass. It's like the Duke. Right. So, so it would be like getting a job at Duke. So with him being right. over there, it's bigger than basketball. And Major. obviously you want to win. Um, but if you, you know, it's like when a father, an African-American father 
you know, talks to me and say, hey, you're at Ignatius. I heard you're at Ignatius. And I was like, yeah, we're over at Ignatius. He was like, man, I never thought that there'll be black coaches there. It was like the Remember the Titans moment when they talked to right. coaches. Bro, that's so true. I played Ignatius. I played Ignatius a couple of times in basketball and football in high school. And when I found out you all were over there, I'm like, oh, that's dope. Like, I'm, I mean, obviously I'm from afar, but I'm like, that's dope. Like, because like you said, you just would never think that that would happen. Like, just, I mean, but I mean, but 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 those are the barriers that you want to break down because I mean, there's some exactly. great, exactly. You know, and, and the times are changing, and trust me, man, I I get it out, I get it in one ear and get it in the other ear, like, oh, those people over there. I'm like, man, sometimes you just got to give a place a chance. Um, yeah, yeah. And and right now, man, I I love the administration over there, the AD, yeah. everybody, man, they're cool and they welcome us with open arms. But I mean, right. you're, you're definitely starting to see a shift as far as young black males calling, uh, you know, calling or messaging and saying, hey, how, how's Ignatius or this, this and that? And I'm like, wait, what? You know, and, <laughs> but, but it's cool. You know, it, it's a rewarding feeling is to see yeah. that, to see those guys say, hey, we want to go to Ignatius instead of St. Ed's, in which yeah. St. Ed's is known that, oh, they're just going to get all the black players. And it's like, whoa, whoa, just slow down. Or let, like, let's see. You know what I'm saying? How we can, you know, do some things that's that's gonna make sense. But with us being right, over, it's I mean, it's great. You know, I, I mean mm -hmm. I, I mean I love it over there, like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like like you said, man, I'm super happy for all you all success at, at, at such a fast rate, man. I know you guys will keep killing it, man. So uh last question. What would you say is Kyle Hubbard's after effect of his entire athletic journey? What were some lessons that you learned from 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 saying it from middle school? St. Ed, Pitt, Cleveland State, uh, John Curl as a player, John Curl as a coach to where you are now. What were some lessons that you learned that you took and you ingratiate into your daily life, that you ingratiate into, into your kid as, as, as you raise him, and that you ingratiate into your players, you know, essentially as we just try to push this culture forward? Oh, man. I, and I'll say uh, limit the shortcuts. Mm. Don't, don't you don't you don't need to take shortcuts, man. It's 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 something where you you might you might think it's cool, but it's a roadblock, right? I love and, that. Limit the shortcut. I gotta write that down. And then you uh, and and then you're and and then, and then you're you know when when you turn around, you're back to where you began. So yeah. so that's why you know um with, with me you know early on it was I tried to take too many shortcuts, and I'll be honest yeah. with you. But now yeah. more guidance. Um, that that's an area in which I love, but also uh, relationship building. You yeah. know, I started my thing called Network Hub, and for me, it's it's I love talking to people. I love going. I love going to certain places, just going and just meeting new people because you never know yeah. who the person is, or you never know what story they're going to tell. And, exactly. And that's where sports come in handy because that's why with this football is different from basketball. With football, you got sixty guys and the staff and this and that basketball, it's a shorter knit group, but with football, right, right, right. It's literally like a fraternity. Right. You, you know how it is, you know, uh -huh. and, <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, but, uh, but, and all, and also man, stay grounded. Cause you never know what's going to happen. Man, I love that. I, I love that after effect, limit the shortcuts, you know, you know, uh, stay grounded and, and build relationships, man. I, I've, you know, during my life matriculation as a man, that's one of the one of the main things that I learned is is relationships, man. Like you know, um, learning that not always the best or most required guy gets the job. It's it's relationships. Who you know, like it's it's more about who you know than than, than what you know. And I think as high school students going into college, you more so think that it's what you know, like because everyone says go to college, get an education, and yes, that's important, <laughs> but it's more important on the relationships that you build, right? And you and you know yeah. what's crazy? Here's the crazy thing is though. So I I call I call it I call it the trifecta of Cleveland. So yeah. I it's crazy. I went to I went to St. Ed's, mm -hmm. I coached at Ignatius, and I also went to John Carroll. So my network in the city of Cleveland yeah. with, with those that group is crazy. Right. I love that because yeah. I at, I was like, well, if I was at Pitt, yeah, maybe I'm in the field, blah, blah, blah. But now with me going to John Carroll and having those connections in Carroll and me being at Ignatius now and having those, yeah. 
I'm it's, it's, be it's only going, yeah, it's only up. <laughs> it's only, it's only going to serve you better. Yeah. But as a young serve, guy, serve, serve your mission better. Bro, as a black man, as a black man, that's strong. Yeah. You know, it's crazy because like, strong. When, you know, when you're sitting on the St. Ignatius bench, um, one of the, uh, um, camera camera Joyce's wife you know when we were sitting on the bench she was like man seeing y'all sitting on that bench is power mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's the stuff we don't see we're just out there coach come here you know like come on come on but she was like y'all need to understand that is powerful sitting yeah. with young black men being at St. Nations and that doing the things that you guys are doing with with grace and the knowledge that you guys have is second to none and that's not knocking right. coaches or anything like that but just right. Position. And who knows the stuff that Cam went through when he got the mm -hmm. job? You don't see it, and he rides out and he dominates. And and being mm -hmm. a part of that, you just know. For me, it's bigger than basketball. If you know every time there's a game or every time you do something, somebody say, "Well, you know, you're the first black coaches here." Well, you know, it's like that's and it's 2021, 20. Yeah, you, I know that's a I know that's a powerful feeling, man. That's that's positive. That's bigger than. <clears throat> Of stuff when somebody can say, Well, well, you, you know, you, you know, it's different when you know you, you guys are all black in there. It's like, Wait, what? But you're we're not paying attention to it, we're trying to win games, exactly. We're trying to, to college, we're trying to build young men, you exactly. Know? We're, we're trying to do that, so and we're doing it, so um, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, you, you definitely are, man. Um, so yeah, bro, that's actually all I had, man. One thing I've been trying to pride myself on 2020 was, was a weird, weird year, we lost a lot of people. And one thing I've always felt like I've always personally showed love to, to my network of friends or athletes that I've known or competed against. But I just feel like we we as black men don't show each other enough love, man. So I've been proud of myself on giving guys flowers while they're still here, man. So, you know, I heard about you probably ninth grade, maybe like 04. We were in the same uh, 07 high school class, man. So all the accolades, all the accomplishments, everything you've done up to this point, uh, I want to you know show you your love and kind of give you your flowers. Man and man, eyes to eyes while we both still here, man. Keep keep going, keep doing your thing, bro. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, man. Uh, next time you hear man, I hoop again, man. Oh, you know, at, at this point, I'm just gonna text you like, hey bro, I'm in town. What 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 time? Same time? <laughs> Cause I'm always there for like a weekend or something like that, man. So yeah, man. I appreciate you carving out the time. I know you're busy and hopefully we'll be able to speak down the line, bro. Oh, for sure, man. I appreciate you, man. You got some great going here, man. And and peace and blessings, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, I appreciate. I appreciate the man. Where you and your family be safe, and you have a good rest of the week, bro. All right, brother. You be easy. All right, take it easy. Right, peace. Peace. Yeah, guys. So, uh, yeah, I'm so glad that Kyle Hubbard, assistant men's basketball coach for St. Ignatius High School in Cleveland, Ohio, was able to carve out some time. Um, I thought he just had a powerful story. If you listen to the whole episode, he 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 alluded to all the turbulence he went through in college and transferring from Pitt to to. The Cleveland State to John Carroll to then coaching at John Carroll after being an awesome player there to now being uh, a part of one of the first black coaching staffs at St. Mason's High School, which is a prominent uh, Catholic high school in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, you know, if you're not, if you're not from Cleveland, so super super excited that Kyle was able to carve out some time. If you are watching this episode on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please like the video. Please comment if you have any questions. Please share it. If you think this story resonates with anyone, uh, if you're listening to this conversation via any audio platform, whether that's Spotify, Google Stitcher, uh, uh, Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review, please, and, and download the podcast. As you know, one of the ways that we make money on this podcast is through our listenership. Um, so, and we're still developing more ways to make money as far as merch, as far as our Patreon account, uh, you know, giving you all more exclusive content, um, for who, anyone who wants to join that. So yeah, we appreciate any and everyone who's continued to rock with us for our first 65 episodes and we'll keep these things rolling. Uh, so yeah, until the next time, peace. Subscribe to LeBron Daniel TV, but you already knew that, where we dig deep and find our hustle and every single day we are better than yesterday. Subscribe.